What is going on, everyone? Phil here, and we have a lot to talk about this morning on the Level 1 Podcast. A brand new week starting, a very big, successful, and interesting surprise stream that happened on Wednesday night that I'm sure everyone is a buzz about, plus updates on a million things going on, mostly good, some bad, but that's life, right? It's a brand new week here on DSP Gaming. All this and more on today's Level 1 Podcast. Oh, yeah! Alrighty, everybody. Good morning and welcome to the show and the start of a brand new week here on DSP Gaming. Today is Friday, the 12th of January, 2024. And here is my lovely wife, Kat, to join me for every single piece of content that I put out from now on. Or maybe not. I'm just kidding. Uh, welcome to the show. And unless you've been living under a rock, obviously, you know that things have been going a little bit differently around here recently, especially this year. I told you guys I was going to be implementing tons of positive changes, did I not? I said I had all these things in the works and in the planning for 2024, and a lot of people are like, nah, that's just, that's old Phil talking over hyping everything, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe not, because so far this year, just think of all the stuff that's happened. First of all, the announcement and the launch of my rebranded channel DSP Throwback and already the start of two retro throwback playthroughs that you guys have asked for for many many years that were lost to the internet the announcement of me being involved in a documentary with Mike Klum which is in basically production planning stages of in fact I have to talk to him over the course of this weekend about planning when he's actually going to come out and start filming for the very first batch of stuff for this documentary and that's in the works um, and of course the new thing right the big thing my wife cat has returned back to my streams well for the first time uh this last wednesday night in over five years right so of course everyone is a buzz about everything okay everything and oh my god there's so much interesting new stuff going on i agree it's very hectic and to be honest with you it's hard to keep up with all of it it's like, so I'm working on this, but then I forgot that I still have to do this, so I'm working on this over here, and then there's this new thing, and then oh, there's something with the documentary over here, so I gotta answer this, and then, wait a minute, I still gotta do my normal daily stuff, so I gotta pay bills over here, and I gotta do a regular stream over here, and I gotta do that. In fact, this morning, I, I was just turning on the stream, I'm like, where's the stream? I forgot to set it up. On Wednesday night, you know, every night when I finish work, I always set up the next streams for the next day, in this case, it would have been for Friday because yesterday was my day off. I, I forgot. You know, I have so much going on <laughs> with that very, very awesome and fun Wednesday night family hangout stream that we did. Um, I totally forgot to set up the new stuff for today. That's that's on me. This is something that I have to get used to. I have so much going on right now, and I basically need to get into a routine where I remember all of this stuff that I got to work on and not let anything fall through the cracks and I did and I apologize for that because some people this morning were like Phil always has his stream set up and we sit and wait and talk before he turns it on where was the stream <laughs> that's on me I totally you know absent-minded after being in here you know extra because you got to remember when my streams go offline uh that's not the end of what I'm doing there was still uploading setting up new stuff and then I had to work on the throwback stuff and all this other stuff and then it was my day off so I had to prepare for that and it's like all that stuff and I'm forgetting stuff you know it's light all right, but the good news is I think everything right now is going pretty darn well, all right? And in fact, as you say, where do you start? You start at the beginning. And we have so much to talk about today that here's what I would like to do. I would like to get one possibly negative thing out of the way because literally everything else I think I'm going to talk about on this today's podcast is positive. So 
I would just like to get one thing talked about right here. You see this members total? Because right now, we're over 1,100 members on DSP Gaming. Yes, this is the highest we've ever had. Now, for the record, we actually hit 1,170 the other day. We were at 1,170 on Wednesday, okay? Uh, and I was like, wow, it's amazing. And people were like, well, did you unlock a new emote slot yet? No, we had to hit 1,200 to unlock the new emote slot, and we didn't get it. We got to 1170, and then the stream ended. So like, okay, so that's where we were. Now, that's the highest we've ever had on the channel. Will we ever match 1170 again? I have absolutely no idea. We lost a ton during my day off. Look at that, we lost like 70 members, okay? That means that a big member bomb from December expired. It's fine, there were a bunch of member bombs in December. They're going to continue to expire over the month. Um, so, if you'd like to support the channel today, a great way to do it might be to become a member or give some memberships. If we get to 1,200 members at any point, we unlock a new emote slot. And I actually have a few uh, new emotes that we could possibly use. Uh, someone had actually made me a couple of Street Fighter related emotes. Me dressed up as Ryu and Ken. Remember how I did that last year? So two, two heads of mine looking like Ryu or Ken that are kind of silly that we could use. And those could just be placeholders until we figure out a better emote to use. Because remember I said, once you unlock a new emote slot on YouTube, you basically need to have an emote in there so that you have that slot. Anyway, um, so the good news is, right, highest number of members we've ever had on the channel positivity and support are great right now, right? I mean, let's be honest. Things have been going really good on the channel recently. I think you guys are enjoying all of the positive change, all of the new things in 2024 so far. This month so far, we're only 12 days into 2024 and everything's going great, right? But there is a possibility of something negative and it's really, a, it's really eating away at me. This is what sucks. So here's the thing. I don't actually know how gifted memberships work on YouTube when it comes to like revenue recognition. What does that mean? It means, let's say for example, you were to gift me 10 memberships today. Thank you, right, for that if you did. I don't know when I actually see the benefit from that. If someone were to just buy a membership right now, within a day or two, I should technically see that like in my revenue dashboard on my channel and it should count and it should say, okay, here's what you made this month and what to expect when you get paid by YouTube next month. Well, as you know, earlier this, this week, on the 7th, I received 200 gifted memberships from Nikita. Whoever that is, because that's not a regular, that's not someone who talks in the chat, it's just someone who dropped 200 memberships on the community. You guys got them. As you can see, we still have them. They still count, right? You all have them. The next day on the 8th, another 200 gifted memberships dropped. Like, whoa, same thing from this Nikita person. And we're all so grateful and happy. It's such an awesome, positive feeling, right? And then a day passed, and then on the 10th, so this was back on Wednesday, during my daytime stream, another 100 memberships dropped, and this time it was by someone whose account was named Duty. Now, immediately this caused drama. Why? Because one of my detractor slash restreamer slash hate watcher slash internet stalkers, their name is like Duty Streams or something like that, and people were like, oh, was it them? Yes, it was. So thank you so much to Duty Streams for gifting me 100 memberships. No, I don't think it was them. You know, it's a stupid association. But, I mean, you could definitely say, <clears throat> gee, <clears throat> isn't that kind of weird that this particular person is using that name and then gifting 100 memberships to your community? Yeah, it is weird. And, again, we looked at the account. The account has existed for three years. It's not like a brand-new dummy account made on YouTube. Who knows why an account named Duty, all of a sudden, they've never spoken in the chat, and they're dropping 100 memberships on the channel, right? <clears throat> now, obviously, I don't look a gift horse in the mouth. I'm happy for this. And by the way, if you guys haven't noticed, all of you have kept these gifted memberships. You have them all, so it looks like they've stuck, right? Except, you know, I'm checking every day on YouTube. It's now been five business days since I received that first bit batch of gifted memberships. Remember, it was the seventh I said? They still haven't counted them towards my revenue on the channel. It's as if they don't exist. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean that YouTube is skeptical about a large amount of gifted memberships? By the way, I just kicked the camera. Sorry about that. Does that mean YouTube's skeptical and doesn't want to count them because they're worried that maybe, you know, it was a fraudulent thing? I, I don't know. See, here's the thing with me. I don't track this stuff. 
I just, it, you know, you just let it ride, and then whatever you get, you get, and whatever you don't, you don't, right? And in general, the estimate that YouTube gives you of your revenue for the month is usually correct. And then what ends up happening a lot, <clears throat> what ends up happening a lot is when they do their final like month end estimates of your income, sometimes your income will actually shoot up because there's things in there that weren't factored in properly over the month. That's happened, where it says, oh, you're gonna make this much, okay. And then I actually get paid, and I'm like, oh, it's actually more than what they had said I was gonna get, and that's kind of a good thing. It's a little bonus or whatever, right? <clears throat> so, that's the thing, like, you guys have the memberships, right? Oh, and by the way, I have to move the pop-ups. I'm very glad, thank you very much to Eva Cowboy Fan 1996 for doing that, because I gotta remember, I gotta move this back down to the bottom right now after our special stream on Wednesday night. It's a good reminder there. Um, so yeah, like, you guys kept the memberships. It's not like YouTube said, oh, well, we're skeptical, so we're taking them away or anything. You guys still have them. That's good. And you know what? I'm happy that even if this is some kind of a weird, big fraud campaign against me, at least you guys are keeping the memberships and keeping all the, the benefits. I'm happy for that. I'd rather have you keep them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, you know, I have to be skeptical. You have to, guys have to remember something. I've had so many malicious fraudulent even criminal things happened to me over the years you know remember years ago someone was coming in with insane amounts of fake tips that were from actual stolen credit cards they bought off the black market and so they were coming and do these tip bombs and the next thing you know they weren't real and then i had to basically undo them and uncount them and you know it's a big mess it's a big thing there's all kinds of stuff like that over the years that have happened chargebacks and stuff so yeah when when i get a big thing of positivity like that, like these member bombs, I do have to kind of be skeptical. It's kind of the better thing to do is to err on the side of caution rather than just say, yeah, I'm just going to get it no matter what, you know. So I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm like, dude, it's been almost a week, five business days, and still YouTube's not counting these memberships. What is going on with that, all right? So I don't know, and I actually don't even know if YouTube will even confirm or deny these memberships by the end of the month. I mean, we still have like two, three weeks left in the month. <clears throat> I don't know how YouTube does it. The only thing I could do is at some point, if it's still, like let's, let's say I wait another week and it's still not showing up, maybe I could try to contact YouTube Help. Like they have a chat for partners and say, can you take a look at this and let me know what's going on? But the last time I tried to contact them for help, they don't help at all. It's just someone sitting there in like a call center on a computer going through a checklist of answers and they don't understand the answers themselves. They have no like self-consciousness of what they're talking about. They're just typing answers off of a sheet that they're told to answer from. They don't know anything, okay? So it might be completely worthless. I don't know. I mean, if, any, if anything, you know, if at least I could talk to them and be like, hey, what's the maximum amount of time I need to wait to confirm I'm actually gonna get, you know, something positive from a gifted membership or that you guys might reverse it or whatever. I don't know. It's weird that they're keeping them all in limbo like that. Because think about it, 500 plus gifted memberships in limbo. That's a lot. That's a ton of income. That could help me a, a lot. Think about that. I mean, that's a ton. That's super helpful if that actually counts towards the channel. That could help so much come moving forward next month. So I hope they're real. I hope they count. I'm glad you guys got them and are still reaping the benefits of them. But if I don't get them, yeah, that really stinks. Okay? So that's the only real negative thing that I really have to talk about right now, all right? And I want to get that out of the way because we have so much good, positive stuff to focus on on today's show. I'd rather get that out of the way. Obviously, I'll let you know <clears throat> what happens if and when I get information. I don't know when I'll get information. It might, I might never get information. I might not know till I get paid by YouTube in a month, all right? That really sucks. So it is what it is, but let's at least be happy for the fact that the, the channel is at a record high. I mean, 1170 is the record. Hell, being over 1,100 is crazy, right? So let's see what happens. All right, now, let's do this. Let's talk about all this crazy stuff going on, all right? <clears throat> First of all, yes, let's address the biggest thing. My wife, Kat, returned to my content for the first time in over five years back on Wednesday night. That was what the secret late night mystery stream was. Okay, no one guessed it. A lot of people had a you know a little hint here or there. No one guessed that's what it was gonna be. I think it has been so long since she's been in my content, no one was expecting that, right? It was just like, holy crap, I can't believe it. So for those who weren't here, it was two hours of open Q&A. And basically all we did is we just sat here and we talked with you guys. 
for two hours and we fielded questions and by the way guys thank you so much what a crazy supportive night which again we didn't have goals set up on the stream it wasn't like oh let's raise this let's do that we had nothing just let's just hang out with everyone and see what happens and people were incredibly incredibly supportive I mean, that was a record high late night stream for support. Probably the best late night stream I've had in a year, right? Like, it was crazy. So, obviously, we were all very, we were very happy about that, and that's going to help us out. So, thank you for that, guys, okay? Now, basically, here's how it went, all right? You guys can watch. Go ahead, watch back. The two hours are live. And the cool thing was, Jasper was in here, too. Like, we had no idea if Jasper was going to join us for that stream or not because Jasper joins me when I'm on stream and I have the door open or whatever but we didn't know now here's the thing we've told you guys all the time Jasper is a very social cat <clears throat> right he will always want to be in the thick of things so the fact that both myself and Cat were in here on Wednesday of course he wanted to be in here he was jumping on the chair he was jumping on Cat and me he was on the floor he was doing all kinds of fun stuff which was neat the only thing is like, he's not, he wasn't used to it, so I guess when he was jumping on Kat's lap, he was sinking his claws in, so she couldn't really, like, keep him on her lap. When he's here on my lap, usually, I let him just sit on my lap, and I pet him and stuff on stream, because he's more relaxed in that case, because he's used to that. <clears throat> so, it was still nice, right? It was nice to have the whole family together, because it's literally what it was. It was a family night stream. Me, myself, my wife, and our pet Jasper all together, being here on stream hanging out with all of you it was a nice feeling it really was and first first and foremost before i even talk about anything we talked about i should say thank you to the mods because the mods were out in full force and they locked it down and they made sure that there was no excessive nonsense you can't 100 percent foolproof anything on the internet but man they did a great job because of course idiots immediately tried to come out and be disgusting and they shut it down and it was really well done i'll tell you this way better than our experience when we were back on twitch five years ago where we tried to do the same thing and twitch you just get so many idiots coming in you can't stop them and it just becomes a cesspool right here on youtube you have a semblance of control right you can actually stop that nonsense and the moderators being here were doing a great job <clears throat> And it worked out really well in that regard. Um, now, here's the thing, okay? Basically, we had a ton of fun for two hours. We didn't know what people were going to ask. We didn't really care. But at the same time, when you say stuff up front, like, hey, guys, this is not about the documentary at all. Don't ask questions about the documentary because we're not going to talk about it. And this has no involvement with it, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, what about the documentary? Is she going to be in the documentary? What about the documentary? Documentary is like... We set it up front for a reason, and we get it. People joined, like, midway, but some people just don't get it. If you spam the chat 40 times with the same question and we're still not answering it, there's probably a reason. That wasn't the only case. There was probably, like, 10 different people who were spamming the chat with the same question over and over. It's like, how did you not get the hint the first nine times that I ignored your question that I'm not going to answer it, right? Because, of course, you get people who are nice. You know, what's your favorite food, uh, food to make for the family, right? What's your favorite game of last year? Those are great questions. Not, hey... What specific brand of something are you wearing or doing? And how much money do you spend on it? And this and that. And it's like, what? Like, why would you ask that? You know, it's like prying questions into private stuff. Or, or even to like, because here's the thing. You know that people always try to turn stuff into something it's not. So imagine if like on a stream, I tell you exactly how much money I spent on a shirt and what brand it is. Next thing you know, you got people micromanaging. Well, you see, Phil made this much money on a stream and he spent this much on a shirt. And I know that sounds insane, but that's what they do. So, I mean, we're not going to be answering ultra-specific, nonsensical questions like that on a stream. It's the first time someone's appearing on stream in five years. You would think you'd have, like, smart questions, not the dumbest, most menial, specific, prying questions, which we're not going to answer, obviously. But, you know, it's always a mix. What can you do? You're going to get people who are just going to try to be stupid and, and pry into nonsense, right? Um, and there's nothing you can do about that. So, we dealt with it, right? We did our best, and again... Shout out to the moderator team. They helped a lot, and we were adjusting it a lot. By the way, like, as you saw, even though we had been planning that for about a week, um, it's not like we had the specifics worked out. I was going to sit in a chair that was the same height as this chair, and then when I went to sit in it, the chair was slightly higher, and I was, like, way up here, and Cat would have been down here, so it didn't make sense. I was like, well, that doesn't work. So I was running in the garage. I was like, what the hell can we use? I had a plastic. Do you want to see it, what I was sitting on the whole night? Here you go. This cheap, shitty plastic stool is what I was sitting on for that whole two-hour stream 
This is it. This is the only thing we have in the house that's the same height as my chair right now. But it's not sturdy. Look, it's like flimsy plastic. So I was sitting on it. It was like wobbling and shit. Like I said, I feel like I was surfing. Sitting on this piece of crap. You know, this is meant for like, you know, you put some outside a plant on it or something. It's not for someone to sit on for an extended period of time, right? <clears throat> <laughs> so in that regard, um, yeah, basically, I uh, was basically doing it on the fly, right? I was literally trying to do stuff on the fly, and it so, to some extent it worked well, and to other extent it didn't, you know? I know it wasn't perfect. I feel like that's the kind of thing, like, for example, the audio, I guess it was fine, but some people were saying because we were moving towards and away from the mic, it wasn't working as well, um... You know, the camera angle wasn't perfect. I don't know if it ever will be perfect because to fit two people on camera like that is much tougher than fitting just me in the center. And the lighting, too, isn't going to be perfect because we have one ring light. We don't have two. So, you know, what are you going to do? It's not perfect. But it worked. I think it worked well for what it was, right? For two hours of Q&A, it was a really great stream. Viewership was sky high, supposedly. I don't even know how many we had on the stream because we weren't looking. But, you know, the stream itself, when you look at the archives, like thousands and thousands of views, like, well, that's way more than a typical stream that I would do. Um, <clears throat> Voland actually says audio wasn't an issue at all. You think so? You think the audio was fine? If that's the case, that's good news because we weren't sure how it was going to work, you know. I think the problem was kind of getting us both. Like, right now, I'm sitting right in the center. It looks perfect, right? But when I'm over here, I'm kind of out of perspective. And when Kat's over here, she's kind of out of perspective. It's not You're not centered, so the camera's not dead on to your face. So it kind of looks skewed and weird, but I don't know how to fix that, you know? Anyway, the whole point of that stream was to re-invite and re-introduce my wife to my content and to you guys, you know, having her in a stream. Uh, after over five years of her away, it was, I want to make this abundantly clear too, it was one hundred percent her choice i never pressured her at all to come onto my content i told you guys i've always had this open door policy that if she ever felt like she wanted to be part of my content she could be and she felt like it was time and i don't know if it was a combination that it's a new year and things you, know, you get to a point where you're just so like she said she said this herself on the stream you get so desensitized because you know there's so many people constantly just saying negative things about you that who cares uh, about it anymore they have said every possible th nasty thing they could possibly say and once it's all been said and done and it's already out there who gives a shit about what else they're possibly going to say about you right so who cares what negative insult they could say you know whoop right over your head it just it's like water on a duck right you zoop right off of them so there you go and so basically we we let me put it this way we really enjoyed it. At the end of the night, when we were done, I asked Kat straight up, you know, what did you think? She says, I loved it. That was much, much better than the experience that she was having over five years ago when, we, when I was on Twitch. Like, I think it was because the chat was much more manageable here on YouTube. And, you know, a lot of the regulars came out. And what I mean by that is the people who are meaningfully caring about her. They're not here just for drama. They're here because they actually like hearing about my wife. Of all the things I've said and told, the stories I've told about her and stuff over the years, they gotten to know her and they like her and they want us to hear from her. And now they actually got that. And, you know, having so many regulars out to be genuinely invested and interested um, in it, that was really nice. You know what I'm saying? Um, and maybe that was just a different feeling too because perhaps, uh, you know, back in the day, eight, over eight years ago, it was more about a lot of people just coming on to, to, to be negative and toxic on Twitch. You know, Twitch was really, again, it was kind of uncontrollable of an environment. While YouTube, I feel, is a more controllable streaming environment. So it just went way, way, way better than we had planned. And she told me, so, you know, this is her words, not mine, that she really enjoyed doing it. She does want to be in future content, but she wants to see how the public reception is to the stream. She wants to hear everyone's feedback about it because one of the big questions at the end of that stream, right, was very simple. How often should Kat appear in content? How often should she come on a stream? Should it be that maybe once every couple of weeks she comes on and we just do a, a family night Q&A hangout session together with the chat? Would that work? 
um, should she involve herself in gameplay? Now, one of the things that was determined, and we talked about this on the, that nightly first stream, was she very much wants to come on, on the streams and play Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth with me, but not the main game, because the thing is we're both going to be playing it. She's very, very excited for Like a Dragon. It's her most anticipated game of this year so far. She's going to be playing it, and she's going to play way more than me, because I'm going to be balancing between multiple games, and she'll probably be focusing mostly on that one game. So because of that, she's going to end up being way ahead of me. All right? There's no way. She, if she comes on my stream, she's going to know everything or whatever. You know what I mean? So basically, what she would like to do is actually be a part of um, the virtual island content. And when you say, well, what does that mean? It means that there is a virtual like Animal Crossing style island that you can build in the new Like a Dragon. And the way it works is, I guess it's its own thing. Now, it's unclear because the game's not out yet. But I think what happens is, as you play the game, you unlock more things for this virtual community island. Like, for example, maybe if you hit a certain story milestone, you'll unlock a new part of the island with more content. Or maybe if you do a certain amount of side missions, you'll get some new thing you can add to your island, right? Or maybe you recruit new new islanders to join your island and be part of this, the community there. I don't know because we don't know. No one knows yet. The game's not out. The early reviews don't go into detail about this virtual island thing yet. But the thing is if it really does play like Animal Crossing that's a game that both I and Kat love and played many years ago, you know, during the COVID year. What was it, 2020? We both played it on Switch and loved it and that would be something really fun um, to do together. Maybe do it like once a week. We have a dedicated night where two hours a week we're just working on this virtual island. You know, and over the course of, you know, two months, we now have this thriving community of stuff going on on the island. And, you know, if it is, maybe that would benefit the main playthrough too. But again, no one knows because the game's not out yet. But that would be pretty neat, you know, and that would be the starting point. Because, of course, like I said during that stream on Wednesday night, everyone likes to take a little pebble and really take that little pebble and turn it into a mountain. So people are like, so what other playthroughs is Cat going to be in? And are you going to do co-op and it takes two? And are you going to do co-op in this particular horror game? And are you going to do this? And Cat, are you going to go on stream? Are you going to do your own streams? Are you going to start your own channel again? Are you going to stream full time? Are you going to just like, what, 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 what? Who? Relax. People tend to get so, so, so ahead of themselves. It's like, just relax, okay? Let's not even get, that's not even a discussion. Half the stuff people are bringing up are like, we didn't even talk about it or think about it. That's not even something we said. This is like, it's called a slow easing in process, right? We had our first stream together on Wednesday night. It went well. She felt comfortable and enjoyed it. I felt comfortable and enjoyed it. You seem to feel comfortable and enjoy it. So let's not ruin that by immediately oversaturating everything. Like I made the joke when I turned on the podcast and here's my wife will be in all my content from now on. No, that's like the worst thing you could possibly do. You don't want to immediately overload everyone now with cat being and everything, right? Let's see what happens now. It's up to her. If, if that stream was well received and you guys this week are like, yeah, we want her back. Let's have a nice chill night stream. Is it a possibility she would come back maybe at the end of this week for a late night stream just like last week? Maybe, but maybe we'll wait two weeks. Maybe we should wait two weeks. And then not this week, but the end of next week, I'll sit down with her and do another stream and we hang out. And then maybe in another week or two weeks after that, when Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth is out, that's when our next stream is. And that could be us doing the virtual island stuff together. You know, I think it's nice to have it in there as a possibility, but not have to be this overwhelming feeling of like now there's pressure at every moment, right? Because that's the thing. That's Ultimately, that's how it's going to be nice if there's no pressure. She wants to come on and hang out and do something, great. She wants to take a few weeks off because she's just not into it, great, right? And no demand and no pressure and it's not some giant, you know, dedicated thing. And the other thing is, that's the that's the good thing about this. Don't overpromise and underdeliver. Don't say, oh yeah, so she's going to be here every week on this date and not night and not night and this and that. And then all of a sudden something changes and she doesn't feel like it. And now it's like, oh, well now everything's thrown into disarray and everyone's disappointed. I'd rather not do that, right? You guys can depend on me to be here for my usual schedule and all of that. If it so works out that she wants to be on a stream again, great. And I think, again, one of the major factors of that <clears throat> is going to be um, you guys and your feedback. If the feedback this week is, wow, that Wednesday night stream went really well. We have, you know, we've been thinking over the week. We got some more questions for your wife, and she wants to. She'd like to come in and do another stream. We'd love to have her and do another like Q and A late night stream. Awesome, right? Great. 
But maybe we not. Maybe not. Maybe that's not the vibe. Maybe this week we're all into games and progress in the games or whatever, and that's okay too. So that's what I feel like. Like, let's just kind of figure it out together and then go from there positively. I think that would work out well, okay? So let's not go crazy. Let's not get overexcited. At the same time, I, I am excited. Like, I thought it went really well. She did too. That's the other thing. Her direct feedback is she loved it. This is so different from over five years ago. Better vibe, more positivity. Loved hanging out with you guys. Would like to come back again, but not overdo it, okay? So there you go. And I'm sure you guys are going to have questions. And you can always throw them my way when we get to point, you know, we're doing Q and A or whatever. We're on a stream. You want to ask me about how it went or what her thoughts were about it, you know, I'll do my best to answer from what she told me. Or I could always ask her behind the scenes to see if we get more answers on stuff like that. But <clears throat> I do feel like some people just tend to get so overexcited about this stuff, right? That then they all of a sudden they're like, oh, I already got 12, 20 new plans of things to do. Like, no exaggeration, I started getting emails. So here's an idea you can do with your wife. You can do this and this and this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Holy moly. Let's all just stop getting ahead and just focus on the now, right? And the things that we just had a great stream. That's excellent. Let's move slowly and ease into good stuff, correct? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. Um, now, the funny part is, and I'll say this too, because I started seeing a... a pattern of negativity on the videos okay basically what it is is my detractors and haters love to, to fabricate drama so I saw a couple things and one of the running themes was oh you just kept constantly talking over her and interrupting her so I asked her I said did you feel like I was doing that she's like no I don't even know what they're talking about I know because you know the thing is if she's giving an answer and I feel like I can add to it because there's something that we've talked about personally in a conversation that I'm going to jump in and chime in. That way it feels organic as opposed to if I just let her talk endlessly and then I never chime in, then you could not get to a certain part of a conversation that could be much more interesting. And this is something that actually used to happen also when I used to do co-op stuff with John Rambo back in the day. I could just sit there and let him talk endlessly about what he's saying, like when we're doing our wrestling commentary show that we used to do. Or I could chime in with something additional. And he's like, oh, yeah. And then he'll follow up. And you have a back and forth as opposed to just I'm talking. Now that person is talking. Now I'm talking. Now that person is talking. Instead, you can actually have what's called conversational tone, which is more natural than just one person talking and then having a dialogue. And then the other person has a single dialogue. It's a little better, you see. But the thing is, people have not heard Kat talk in over five years on stream. So I think a lot of people just were really attentive to what she was saying. And of course, you hear me talk every single day, all day. So obviously what I'm saying probably isn't nearly as interesting as what you thought she was saying because she's the person you haven't heard from. So I understand that feedback and I accept it and thank you. I asked her and she said, no, she didn't feel that way. But here's the thing is when people say stuff like, oh, well, this was just happening. Well, it wasn't. The two people who were here can tell you it wasn't. But you're going to do that because you're running with your bullshit memes as usual, right? They always have to have a toxic negative meme going on and that was the running meme supposedly is that oh Phil just talked over her constantly the whole night it didn't happen literally factually didn't happen nice try you failed again <laughs> every time they gotta make up this is their running so for two days you know that night and all yesterday that's all that's the meme about the night is that Phil's an asshole he wouldn't let his wife talk didn't happen you're an idiot you can believe it in your circle jerking circles no one else believes you because we all watched the videos people were here live they saw what happened and they had a good time <clears throat> Okay, so good stuff, right? I thought the stream went really well. Now, when's the next time Cat will come on stream? We don't know yet. Let's see. Again, I want your feedback. We, I say we want your feedback. <clears throat> I'm obviously the one on stream all day. I'm the one who's going to hear it. I'll relay that to Cat. We'll hear what people said. Do you want her to come on sooner rather than later? Maybe two weeks would be the sweet spot. Maybe this Wednesday night would be the next time. I don't know. Let's leave it all in, in the realm of possibility. And let's talk about it as we get closer to that. Basically, she's not coming on right now. You know, we have a whole week of content to get through before there's even a possibility. So let's let's figure it out. I think people have different opinions too. Like some people are like, yeah, every two weeks is great. And others are like, well, maybe once a week is great. And others are like, eh, maybe every two weeks for like a vlog style or a QA and a style. But once you get to the gameplay, then have her on more often and maybe have her hang out with you maybe like, you know, once a week for the, for the island thing. You know, we'll see. We'll absolutely see and find out from there, okay? Um, <clears throat> cool. By the way, 
it's I, I should bring this up. We are very, very cold here in Washington State. We have a humongous dip in our temperatures. We went from uh, being in the 40s and 50 degrees Fahrenheit. We're down to the 20s. It's freezing temperatures outside. But luckily for us, the snow that we were supposed to get this weekend went away. So there's no precipitation. So it's cold outside, but no precipitation. But it's I have the window open, and I'm sitting here, and I'm like, wow, my, uh, my feet are cold. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab a pair of socks and put them on. And then if I need to, I'll close the window. But I think I just want to run and grab a pair of socks and toss them on for today. Probably the weekend, I'll need them like every day because it is such a different temperature. All right, so give me a second. I'm just going to run to the bedroom, grab a pair of socks, toss them on, come back. And then we got so much more to talk about on the show today, guys. Really, there's so much going on, positive stuff. All right, I'll be right back when we grab socks and we'll continue. Uh, bookworm, I do have a pair of slippers, um, but I don't uh, wear them in the office. I wear them outside the office because we have hardwood floors, so it makes sense to have slippers or you're walking on slippery, cold hardwood floors. Um, but I don't wear them in here. But socks, wear them. There you go. Very exciting shot right there. Okay, um, <clears throat> so let's continue, shall we? The so first thing down... Amazing family night stream. You can check it out here. If you didn't see it, it's live. Two parts. Give it a look. Give me your feedback. Thank you so much, very much, for your support during that stream. And let's start to think about the future of, of my wife being in my content and streams. Okay? Cool. Um, oh, excuse me. So, the other half of the equation of all the new stuff that's going on right now is obviously my rebranded redirected channel DSP throwback which you could find at youtube.com forward slash at DSP throwback okay so here is the now the status of that channel one week in all right the Final Fantasy 13 playthrough I believe as of this morning is now eight parts in I believe <clears throat> actually shoot I don't have it on that screen I think we're eight parts in give me a second here to confirm I just got to jump over to the channel on my dashboard here. Oh, yeah. As of this morning, it just went live, part eight of Final Fantasy XIII. Okay? So, to reiterate how that channel works, every single day at 10 a.m. Pacific time, as long as things go according to plan, which may not always, um, we're going to have a new video go live on that channel. Now, it's all... I say we because it's not just me. It's actually... Uh, people who are working on this channel with me, editors essentially, who are editing that content together. I've provided the raw gameplay, they're editing it together, they're uh, adding thumbnails, they're combining it into longer parts, they're running it through AI upscaling for higher resolution, higher frame rate, everything. Okay, so basically the playthroughs look and sound pretty different from the originals. So eight parts of Final Fantasy 13 are now live. And here's what I've noticed, you know, you look at the performance of that playthrough over the week. At first, excitement was super sky high. Part one of that playthrough has over 5,000 views. And I'll be honest, I never expected a single video on that channel to hit 5,000 views. I thought at most the videos would get like 1,000 a, a views. That's it. Um, I thought eventually they'd trail off to a few hundred and that's it. Getting that many views on some of those videos, like what the heck? Like, wow, I guess people are excited for this project where we're bringing back these old defunct playthroughs that have been missing from the internet for ages. Um, so as of now... There are not eight parts live. But here's the funny part, all right? Starts at like 5,000 views, goes to like over 1,000, then 1,000, then like 800, then like 600, then like 300, and then like the latest part from two days ago, 
only has like 200 and now the one from this morning so far is tracking to basically again have around 200 views now here's the thing i don't really care it's not a big deal the whole point is we're just getting this legacy content on the internet because it's been lost to time and no one can see it anywhere else i'm happy that we're presenting it in a better way so it's more digestible to the to the viewing audience but i'm gonna be honest with you guys final fantasy 13 i kind of always knew this would happen if you guys aren't aware that game's not very good <laughs> it's not like the intro the whole first 15 hours of final fantasy 13 are this very slow burn slow build very boring linear content and i'll be honest the characters just aren't that good Vanille and Hope are two of the worst written characters in Final Fantasy history. Snow is probably as intellectually and character deep as a puddle. Like, he's a very boring character, one-dimensional. The only character in the game that's really interesting is Lightning. But even then, it's because she's more enigmatic and you don't really know what's going on with her. But outside of that, most of that story is terrible. I'm being honest, I didn't like Final Fantasy XIII until the game opens up in the second half. Once you hit that part where now you're in an open world, you have all this open questing and fighting and things you can do and you can explore and go different directions and stuff. And then the music also gets really good. Then the game gets better. But the problem is you literally have to go through so much to get to that point. Like so much shit to get to that point that it's just not fun it gets very boring and even if you watch this playthrough this is the original playthrough from 2010 my commentary says as much i'm like dude this is so boring here i am four hours into the game and i'm so bored what are they doing with this game this is supposed to be final fantasy why am i so bored and not caring about the story and not engaged it really was a bad game i'm sorry until again i i actually enjoyed the second half because then you can you have more characters the new character who joins your part it's more interesting and then you can actually make your own party makeups, meaning you can mix up your parties and stuff for different builds. And then you start fighting better enemies, optional enemies, interesting side quests and things, and it gets much better. But the game really sucks 15 hours in. And think about this right now. 15 hours split into half hour parts is going to take you how long? That's like 30 parts. We're eight parts in. <laughs> so if you do the math, that's going to take weeks. You know what I mean? Like weeks till we get to the good part of the game. So I'm not surprised in any way, shape, or form that this game already people are like, eh, I watched like five parts on board now. I'm not going to watch anymore. Yeah, you're right. The game sucks. It always did. Like I always said that back in the day too. Like it's just not very good. I was disappointed that's what they did with Final Fantasy because the game just wasn't that good. I think what happened was over time that playthrough kind of grew in legend. And the reason being because you couldn't watch it, right? Everyone was, oh, yeah, I watched Phil's Final Fantasy 13 playthrough. It was so good. But you couldn't watch it, so you couldn't even confirm if it was good or not. I think the commentary is pretty good. Although it's hilarious because I think around part six or seven, um, you could tell I'm drinking. Now, here's the thing. Back in the day, that's what I used to do. I used to sit around drinking rum and coke when I played games. So I was drinking rum and coke, and I say, like, the words backwards – there's like a sentence and I literally say the words in the opposite order and don't notice that I said it. And people start commenting. They're like, dude, you are totally drinking during this playthrough. Did you notice you said the words backwards? And I, I was listening back to my own commentary. I was like, yup. I responded to that comment. I was like, yup. I was definitely drinking. You can tell when I'm drinking during the playthrough. And this was when I was probably so goddamn bored that I started drinking to, <laughs> to keep myself going. And, uh, you know, here I go. I start slurring my words. I think we're in part seven now. I didn't, I don't know if I watched part eight yet, but yeah, I did watch part eight. That's right. And I started slurring my words and stuff. I'm like, dude, totally the liquor is taking effect now. So now I'm curious, the further we get into this playthrough, right? Like in the in parts like 12, 13, is it the same first night that I'm playing it? Am I going to get like super drunk by the end? I don't know. We're going to find out. Anyway, so we're eight parts in to Final Fantasy 13. And what's going to happen is we're going to alternate. Because as of yesterday, I began with my Red Dead Redemption playthrough. Now, some perspective here. Final Fantasy 13 was early 2010, like maybe like February 2010 or something like that. Red Dead Redemption was a few months later, March, uh, excuse me, May and into June, I think. Um, Cause I, if I remember, excuse me, it was Memorial Day weekend. So I think that was like late May, early June, 20, 2010. And I remember, I think I got a camera upgrade during that time frame. Cause here's the weird part. When we started with the Final Fantasy 13 playthrough and I upscaled it, well, I say I. I did not upscale it. I should not say that because I don't want to take credit for something I didn't personally do. 
when the videos were upscaled by my editors to 60 frames, there was ghosting. And a lot of people were complaining. They were like, wow, it looks good in certain parts and almost unwatchable in others because you had a headache because of the ghosting. So can you stop doing the 60 frames? So we did. Like right now, as of part five, Final Fantasy 13 will be 30 frames because people complain too much, okay? <clears throat> but with Red Dead, I was using, I believe I was using a different camera. And so once the gameplay starts and, and you know, John starts running into Armadillo for the first time, it actually looks legitimately good at 60 frames, in my opinion. Is there some ghosting? Yes, because the thing is, it's an old digital camera. You'll never not have that ghosting. Even in the raw footage, there's ghosting. So obviously when you're upscaling from 30, or actually sub 30 frames to 60, if there was originally ghosting, all the adding frames is gonna do is add more ghosting. It's never gonna look smooth, okay? But <clears throat> for the most part, I, I have personally watched three parts of Red Dead so far, and they look much better with the 60 frames. Like, much significantly better than how the original playthrough looked. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. There's parts that look messed up, but for me, I like it. So I think, for now, unless we get an overabundance of complaints again, like we did for 13, uh, Final Fantasy 13, I think that Red Dead should stay at 60 frames. I think it legitimately looks good with the gameplay moving at 60 frames, okay? So, part one of that went live yesterday. So far, it's doing well. You know, well, I haven't been actively checking constantly, but I think it's over a thousand views within the first, not even day yet, because I think it was it was uh, released yesterday afternoon. And now each day, it'll actually now start being released at 10 a.m. So basically, Red Dead Part 1 went live yesterday. This morning at 10 a.m., it was a Final Fantasy 13 Part 8. Tomorrow at 10 a.m., it'll be Red Dead Part 2 at 10 a.m. And then Sunday at 10 a.m., it'll be Final Fantasy 13 Part 9. And then... Monday, it'll be Red Dead Part 3 at 10 a.m. See, and we're just going to keep doing that and alternating. Now, if I have a reason to do any kind of other video, like maybe occasionally I'll throw in like a channel update video over there just to give people an update on what's going on with the channel, um, I'll do that. But I, I want the content to kind of speak for itself. I don't want to be interjecting myself into there constantly. Right now, I don't have any plans to stream on that channel anytime soon or anything like that. I told you long term, perhaps once there's a lot of content on the channel, then I would consider that. But for now, I don't want to jump the gun and say, yeah, let's just start streaming there and everything and doing everything. No, I don't want to do that, okay? So <clears throat> please give it a look. If, you, if you're into the Red Dead playthrough, it's begun. And I, I, of course, I would love your feedback. What do you think about the Red Dead playthrough? How does it look? All right, let me know. Please leave comments on the video um, or share here on stream, whatever you want to do. I'm all ears on that. And pl please give me recommending recommend bleh, recommendations for constructive criticism and feedback if you think there's something I could be doing better over there. Oh, by the way, and this is a big one. I totally forgot about this. So after all of our conversations, all right, over the last week, I have changed the titling of the videos on DSP Throwback. What I've done is exactly what we talked about. So basically, a little blurb to describe what's going on in the video, then the part number, and then the game. So for example, Marston's Epic Journey Begins, part one, Red Dead Redemption from 2010 PS, uh, or Xbox 360. That's what the title is. A little preview for tomorrow. Part two, I've just been deputized. Part two, Red Dead Redemption, 2010 Xbox 360. So that's what I'm doing. I'm now doing the titles the way that you guys recommended. Apparently, you guys are saying everyone does this. So for Final Fantasy 13, I did it as well. Uh, some examples of the titles on that playthrough because I changed them all. Part one is finally the classic Run Reborn. Part one, Final Fantasy 13. Part two is the world's worst leader. Part 2, Final Fantasy 13. Part 3, most annoying Final Fantasy kids ever. Part 4, it's the first boss. Part 5, is this a rom-com now? Part 6, Crystal Lake and... Crystal Lake and the War Mech boss. Part 7, the Gates of Antiquity arrival. And this morning, Part 8 was Garuda Surprise, Snow versus an Army. That's actually the titles. And then, of course, this is like the part number in the game. So... Uh, again, this is me going directly off of your feedback, doing that. If you think those work, let me know, all right? If you don't think that works, let me know. I might actually start experimenting with that on this channel too. But the question is, if I start doing it right now, will people be upset? Like, what if today, right now, with Baldur's Gate 3 
I start titling my videos like that. Like the first three today, I just title. It's the, the description first, and it's a short description, part number, game. Would people be upset if I do that? I don't know. Ponage101 says, I like these new titles. They sound better. And Angel of Vitality says, it's short, sweet, and to the point. Right? Fed Rogers says, this game sucks. Part 10, Final Fantasy 13. Well, I mean, that would be very to the point. But then I don't know if anyone would watch if I actually said that. So, <laughs> right? So, again, I'm trying to improve. I'm trying to listen to your feedback. I'm trying to be better. Please let me know how all this is working. Okay? Things will only get better if I get the right feedback so I know what to continue to do. And here's the thing. I love it. The people that all these years, they always say, oh, he's lazy. He's the guy that sits back and does no effort or anything. It's like, if you looked in the last few years of all the effort that I've put in, my entire setup's different now, right? We've got better visuals, better quality. I've upped my bit rate on both my stream and my videos, better backgrounds that I change every month trying to put effort, better animations, right? Now we're trying to spruce things up on the channels. Better thumbnails, better titles, you know, got a channel of the throwback content. That's something you've asked for for all these years. My wife wants to be part of my content again. How can you say that things are stagnant? How could you possibly, with any kind of a piece of factual evidence behind it, say that I am lazy and I'm not trying to improve my content for the better? I don't know how you could unless you're a disingenuous piece of crap just trying to create drama for the sake that you want to put out content on the internet and make money on me, right? That's about it. I can't think of another way you could really justify it, all right? So I'm doing my best, all right? Now, let's see how the year goes, right? Let's, uh, let's see if things stay the way they are and they're positive and they're fun. I hope they are. I hope that all this continues and you guys will continue to check out the content and support it and enjoy it and give me feedback. It is literally all these improvements that I have done. I just want you to understand. Literally, <clears throat> every single improvement I've done is because of you and your feedback. That's why I need it. This constructive feedback is greatly appreciated. Sitting here and, and saying toxic, nasty stuff constantly gets nothing done. But actually giving me constructive feedback in a positive way, you see I'm making these changes now, right? So there you go. Jade, I see ya. I know you're not going to be here for Baldur's Gate. I understand. But you'll probably be back tonight for Street Fighter. I'll see you then. Okay? Guys, it is feeling kind of cold. I think I'm going to close my window a little bit before we continue. Because I'm actually feeling genuinely cold. So give me a second to close it a little bit. It's that cold outside. This is definitely, definitely the coldest it's been here for a very long time. Oh, Jade's not feeling well at all. Oh, Jade, I'm sorry to hear that. All right. Well, Jade, please feel better. And I'll see you when I see you when you feel better, okay? Whether that's tomorrow or not. If you need a couple days away or whatever, I hope that you feel better, man. I'm sorry to hear that you're under the weather. I hope that I don't get under the weather. You know, right now with all the shit going on, that's the thing. Like that's, That is one of the biggest shortfalls or I could say one of the most biggest pressures that I have. I am a one-man show right everything going on here is hinging on me being present healthy and able to pump out content and do this stuff for everybody right even though yes i have editors working on my content behind the scenes and i've got my wife who's willing to jump in and help with some stuff and i got a documentary going on behind the scenes if i'm not available for any of that it all falls apart you know what i'm saying so i've got to like try to maintain everything going on and there's a lot of pressure like i said i forgot to set up the streams for this morning and that sucks because i know you guys like to queue in and be ready luckily it's not the end of the world but i just hope that it doesn't roll, uh, turn into me forgetting a lot of stuff right now i have three different youtube channels which i have to jump between every day and approve comments on and monitor the progress of and set up for all the various different shows and series and everything i'm juggling that i'm doing all my normal behind the scenes work you know of running a business and everything and I got a real life outside of that as well. So all this stuff going on, um, you know, it can be pretty darn hectic. I hope that thing, uh, <clears throat> you know, things will work out. So, all right. So I talked about our family night streams and the future of that. I talked about an update on DSP throwback. Now what we will do is go through the schedule for this week so you guys know what to expect. And then basically we're just going to go right into like shout outs and Q&A for the rest of the show. Okay. Because we're already late. It's already 12.17. 
Today, Baldur's Gate 3 continues. We're in the Underdark. We did a bunch of questing down there. We're going to continue looting and figuring stuff out. I guess what people are saying is that I can now complete... I guess there's a Forge quest that I can do. And someone else had said in a video comment that I now have the third item I need to put together for some ice item or weapon or something. I don't know. So there's a few quick things I can do. And then we're going to continue with the Underdark into the final area of the Underdark. Try to figure out that stuff and go from there and continue on. I'm loving the Underdark stuff. I think it's great. You guys, again, you've been showing up. You've been engaging. You've been supporting. You've been helping with this playthrough. That's why it's good. Thank you for that. Let's keep it going. Tonight on the live stream, it's Friday Night Fights. We're in the final countdown now, the final two weeks, essentially, uh, for Street Fighter VI. I'm going to play with some Dalsim again tonight. I haven't used him in a couple of weeks now. Let's go back to Dalsim for a late night stream and just see how it goes. All right? I'm thinking another stream because I might do another Street Fighter stream this week. It might be Zangief, but I haven't played with him in ages, so I'll probably watch a couple Zangief players play to see how what they're doing um, to re remind myself and go from there. So it's Dalsim tonight, okay? Tomorrow, it's going to be the continuation of Resident Evil Zero Remastered, and the good news is, after having watched back my classic playthrough from eight years ago, I think I figured how to unsoft lock myself and beat this bat boss and continue on, so we're going to do that. Tomorrow night is the continuation of Sea of Stars. Finally, after a freaking week, we're going to get back to Sea of Stars, okay? Uh, Sunday, it's going to be my react show, DSP versus the Internet, and I'm thinking for variety purposes, perhaps Sunday night, uh, we will do like a, a Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer stream, just for fun, just to mix things up, because we haven't done it now in several weeks. So it would be nice to just have like a one-off stream of a bunch of first-person shooter gameplay. Uh, Monday, more Baldur's Gate 3 and Street Fighter 6, like I said, probably Zangief. Um, wait a minute, I take that back. Was I going to do that Monday or not? No, I think what I was going to do is Monday, I was going to do uh, Baldur's Gate 3 and Sea of Stars. Tuesday, Resident Evil 0 and Street Fighter 6, probably Zangief. Because then Wednesday, I want to do Baldur's Gate 3, but I want to leave the night stream open. Because that way, if we want to do Sea of Stars, we can. But if we all decide, hey, maybe it's another night for Kat to come back, and Kat's in the mood for coming back, she has that open night where there's freedom if she wants to, to do a night night stream with more Q&A. Okay? So we're kind of leaving it open. It doesn't have to happen. But to what if, if you guys think maybe we should wait two weeks, we could do that. It's up to you. And, of course, how she feels, too. It's all these factors involved. And I'll, I'll talk to her over the week and see what she wants to do. So that's the rough week. Now, keep in mind. There's no real new games that I'm interested in until the end of the month on the 26th. That's a dual new release day. Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, and Tekken 8. Okay? So, I'm excited. And by the way, we're out of time for today to talk about this stuff. But, I didn't even get to talk about my Phil's Day Off segment. Right? I think we're going to do the Phil's Day Off segment tomorrow. Because we're out of time. I don't want to go super late on this podcast. But, I have a lot to talk about. Yesterday, we did a lot together. Kat and I. And actually came to a determination kind of interesting determination about some other stuff and games coming up but i want to talk about that and we're out we already spent so much time talking about wednesday night that we didn't even get to that right so i guess the phil's day off segment will actually wait till tomorrow's podcast and i have a lot to say about stuff that we did together okay cool <laughs> folks let's jump right into uh shout outs because i don't want to dilly dally any further okay so first of all, on the YouTube side of thing, we got Ava Cowboy Fan 1996, and that is a brand new membership. So thank you to Ava Cowboy 1996 for the membership. I appreciate that very much. As you guys can see, I have a pretty conservative membership goal today. We're at 1,103 members. By the end of both of today's streams, I'm looking to hit 1,115. So to try to get 12 more. It would be great if you like the content, if you could support it by becoming a member today or maybe gifting some memberships to the community. We did have 1170. We lost 70 during my day off, so there's definitely around 70 people willing to accept more memberships uh, if someone were to gift them, okay? Cool. Tips-wise, we actually have quite a few tips to shout out here because there was a few that happened during yesterday, so let's get started. A $1.50 tip came in, and this person says, this is my first time tipping. Uh, their name is... The Dark Side Child Returns. Okay. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to abbreviate your name. The Dark Side Child Returns. Only because that's such a long name that that's going to completely dominate my leaderboard here. Okay. So, it's a fifty tip. Let's see what they have to say here. This happened during my day off. But as I told you guys, if you happen to contribute during one of my days off, I would always just count that towards the next stream that I do. Unless you specifically say, eh, don't count it and don't shout it out. Then I won't. But... If you were to tip, like, on Thursday and I'm not back till Friday, then we'll count it for the Friday morning stream. 
All right? So, the Dark Side Child Returns says the following. I decided to look into subscribing and supporting your channel a bit. I am beyond words how surprised I am with the growth of you and your channel. I'm grateful you're making an effort to bring back your old playthroughs like Red Dead and Final Fantasy XIII. I hope Ellie Noir and others will make a comeback someday. Don't worry, that's exactly what we're planning on doing. I remember having a hard time hearing what you had to say at the end of your amazing Spider-Man playthrough. Unfortunately, maybe a re-upload of that playthrough with better quality would work. You know, I don't remember the amazing Spider-Man game that much. I know that, I guess people said it was good, but it wasn't until the real, the Spider-Man, uh, the Sony-specific Spider-Man, um, that I really remember. I can't remember Amazing Spider-Man that well. I think I remember fighting Electro, though. Hmm. Anyway, so outside of my positive remarks above, I want to ask, what do you think about the Amazing Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2 video games and movies if you watch the movies? And he says, I will also, but it cuts off, so I don't know if there's another tip I'll check in a second. So, as for the movies, I hate them. Seriously, like, no lie, I didn't see them. And then, as I was early on in my YouTube days as a YouTuber, I told my audience, because people would ask me on, like, my show Ask the King back then, did you see Amazing Spider-Man? I was like, nah, it doesn't look good. Like, it looks kind of like a crappy movie, because it has so much CGI or whatever. And people were like, well, what if we were to give it to you? And someone did. Someone actually donated, like, a digital copy of the game. <clears throat> they sent me, like, that digital code. So I downloaded it. Back then, you had to, like, download or you had to get it from like a specific website. Today, like you just go to a site and you can watch it on demand. Like no, like, but back then it was like you had to buffer shit and everything. So I get it and I watch it. This is Amazing Spider-Man 1 and I hated it. <laughs> just, it was too much CGI. I didn't like Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. I thought he was like a douchey, stupid Spider-Man. I didn't like that version. Um, I thought Tobey Maguire was just a better Spider-Man. I didn't like CGI Lizard. I thought he looked atrociously bad. So I just hated the movie. Now, I remember seeing Amazing Spider-Man 2 at some point, and I, I disliked it so much, I don't even remember it at all. Like, I couldn't even tell you anything about it. So, I just don't like those movies. Now, as for the games, if I remember, I think I liked the games. Did I not? I mean, it's so long ago at this point, but I think I did like those games. But again, I feel like, I feel like once the Sony version, you know, Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2 and Miles Morales expansion, once those came out, they kind of completely overshadowed the Amazing Spider-Man games to the point where now I don't remember the Amazing Spider-Man games, so I can't even comment on them in the modern day, okay? <clears throat> now, yeah, see, a second tip came in. I think it's for the same person. So, yeah, so it's still first time doing this. Am I, if the other one didn't go through, how do you think the Final Fantasy VII Remake compares to the original game? Same question along with your thoughts and expectations for Rebirth, and do you plan on playing it? Um... I, as I said, in a nutshell, Final Fantasy VII Remake, I thought was a legit, straight-up remake, and it's not. It's actually a reimagining and a, a, ulti, a multiverse plotline of Final Fantasy VII, so it's not the same game, even though it has a lot of the same plots and things in it. Once you get to the end, you realize this is not original Final Fantasy VII. They've changed it for the better, I think. I think that's good that they're doing that, because now it makes you feel like moving forward with this trilogy which it seems like it's going to be it's more interesting there's more potential that things are going to be very different rather than just a straight up remake of the original games that's identical i feel like the word remake is actually a misnomer or a misleading way to describe it it's not a remake it's like a multiverse plotline reimagining right <clears throat> so overall i actually liked that game but i was upset because i went into it with the whole idea that it was a straight up remake and it's not but now I'm actually very excited for Rebirth because I want to see distinctly what changes are different in Rebirth versus the plain Final Fantasy VII plot. I think that's going to be one of the more exciting things about it moving forward to know there's new content in it. It's not just all redone. Uh, and yes, I'm planning on playing it. I absolutely will be playing it starting in late February. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Advent Children versus Kingsglaive. Uh, Advent Children I saw back in the day. I liked it because it was the first time I ever really saw a video game in that quality of 3D animation. Kingsglaive, meh. I saw it before Final Fantasy XV. I wasn't impressed, but it did add to the story. I was just like, kind of, eh. Uh, the idea was sort of saying, what do you think about playing campaign games alongside uh, of Cat? As I said, uh, right now we're, do we're getting into that slow. We're not jumping into stuff. We're not doing full-on playthroughs. Our idea is to find games here or there that make sense that we want to do together and then ease in and see what else we want to do. Will we ever do a full campaign game together? It's a maybe. Okay. Question about Persona 3 Reloaded. What are your thoughts for the game? Are you excited? Do you plan on playing it? Or getting back to Persona? Uh, well, I've already answered this as well, but in a nutshell, <clears throat> again, in a nutshell, trying to summarize. Persona 3, I like. 
I didn't like the ending. I thought the final boss was broken and cheesy and, and just a, a big time waster. But overall, great game. I like the idea that they're remaking this game for a modern audience and it plays like Persona 5. In fact, the game looks great. The problem is it comes out at the worst possible time. It literally comes out right after Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, which is an insanely long RPG, and Tekken 8, which is going to be a very time-consuming fighting game. It also comes in between the times of those two games and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which is arguably the biggest release of the year. So it really ends up being a game that's just horrible timing. No way anyone could really play it if they're playing those other games. And it just gets swept under the rug because I've already played the original Persona 3. You know? Just saying. There's also another thing. I hate to say it, but Atlas is infamous for striking down channels that play their video games at launch for no good reason. Usually what happens with Atlas is they'll lay out an actual criteria and say, here's exactly what you can and cannot do with our games at launch. Please play up to this point, but don't pass this point. Please be, be mindful. Don't play this spoiler cutscene and stuff like that. So you'll abide by those rules, and they still hit you with copyright strikes. You're like, what the hell just happened? You'll ask them, and like, we have no idea what happened. Just dispute them, and they'll be removed within two weeks. It's like, what? So anytime you play an Atlas game at launch, you're taking a ginormous liability. And being that I'm a businessman, and this is my job and business as well as my hobby to stream games, I can't have my business shut down because they're idiots and they're unprofessional with the way that they handle themselves. So uh, likely, I wouldn't even play Persona 3 Reloaded or Reload or whatever it's called at launch. I would wait a while until basically they stop being copyright happy, and then I would probably play it when it feels like it's a lot more safe. Okay? Um, <clears throat> all right. So thank you for that tip. And then it looks like there actually was a third tip from the same person. So three of these $1.50 tips, it looks like. So actually, I'll just add it again. Uh, that all came in during my day off. So this one. Would you ever consider playing through the older Harry Potter games, like Half-Blood Prince, Sorcerer's Stone, that were on original Xbox 360, PS3, or PS2, Xbox, original Xbox? Uh, I don't know. No one's really ever mentioned them to me, and I don't know anything about them. Um, would I consider playing through the other older Spider-Man games that didn't get the chance to play, like Spider-Man 2, Ultimate Spider-Man? Again, I am not against playing older games, but it's about ones that people want to see enough to the point where, like, we we're taking time out of my busy streaming schedule to play them. And it has to be like, oh, I don't just feel like just doing something random. It has to be like, am I going to get an audience for it? Are people going to come and engage with that content? Or is it going to be that I'm playing for 100 people and no one else really cares, right? I don't know about those games. Is there a demand to ever go back and play old Harry Potter games? I haven't heard it. I mean, I played Hogwarts Legacy last year. I didn't really hear a crowd clamoring for me to go back and play Legacy Potter games. You know, Spider-Man, I used to do Spider-Man marathons in the middle of the summer when there was nothing else going on. There really aren't those kind of dead times anymore. You know what I mean? Like, they, those kind of dead times haven't happened in ages. Uh, now it seems like pretty much I'm either playing a hot new release or I'm playing catch-up on a hot new release that I didn't play when it was out almost all the time. Um... We're not really looking for, for, let's fill two months of dead time with a marathon of, of a certain kind of game or something like that, like there used to be. But I'm not saying it's no. I'm just saying, again, haven't really heard demand for me to do like a marathon of classic Spider-Man games. Would I consider me and Cat doing Q&A to the latest game trailers? So basically what you're saying is like a public react, right? Someone had said that, actually. They said, would Cat and I ever consider doing a react stream together? I don't know, nor do I even know what we would react to. I guess some people were saying, if we were to do my weekly react show and Kat were to join me, now here's the thing, on my weekly react show already, people complain we don't get through all the clips. Now imagine if not only are you getting my take on what we're watching, but hers as well, that's gonna take up even more time and we're gonna watch even less clips. <laughs> you see? Um, <clears throat> I don't know. You let me Again, these are interesting ideas. You guys tell me. These are not something that I can answer. This is something for future consideration and discussion for both myself and Kat. I'm glad that you guys are excited to see that she was on a stream and you'd like to maybe see her in other content. I appreciate that. Let's consider it and talk about it, okay? But let's not get ahead of ourselves and start planning out things before any kind of serious consideration or discussion happens. Okay, continuing on. We have a $2.67 tip from this morning. Uh, and it's a troll, okay? Or wait. Is it a troll? I don't even know. The thing is, here's the thing, and I've told you guys this before. I don't give two shits about the detractors. I don't. I really don't. 
I don't care what they say or do. I don't, you know, if I see a nonsensical pattern and I address it like I told you, one of the nonsensical things that's happened is them saying stupid shit about me talking over my wife when that didn't really happen on Wednesday night. I'll address that briefly and we move on. I'm not going to sit here and talk about them or give them any kind of time because there's no point. This is a $2.67 tip and I they're people, immediately they're bringing up something about detractors. I don't even know what they're saying because I don't follow what the detractors are saying, so I don't give a shit. All right? So all I'm going to say is thank you for an anonymous $2.67 tip. I don't know what that means. I don't care. And I'm just going to move on from it and ignore it. Okay? Sorry, I just don't care. I really have no concern of anything those idiots do. And uh, I'm not going to waste my, th my breath on it. I hope you don't feel like that's me being ungrateful for your tip because it's not. I'm just not going to waste time talking about them. Okay? Uh, I got a $2 tip from Super Snow Carl Turbo HD Remix. Uh, if you and Kat end up playing games together, it wouldn't always be... We wouldn't be the only ones. There's other YouTube couples. For example, there's one called Nightwings play games together all the time. I look forward to you two nonetheless. I'm well aware. Like, I'm well, well, well aware. There are many YouTubers out there that play as couples and stuff like that. And I think that there's a certain level of interest and demand and curiosity for that style of content. And I'm down for that. I am. If we, again, if we can find uh, stuff to do that we want to do together. Just because... We had an, a one awesome late night stream talking to with, with the fans does not mean immediately we're interested in jumping into 400 co-op games. Like, for example, right away someone said, what about the new Outlast Trials coming out? Kat is zero interest in that game. She already looked at it. She's like, oh, my God. It's like extreme gore and just torture and shit. And she's not into that at all. She doesn't want to fucking play that game. She's like, no, absolutely not. Zero interest, right? So over, over time, we'll look at games together. We'll see is there anything. And by the way, by, feel free to give me suggestions. Um... But we'll, we'll consider stuff. But, uh, you know, we're not going to be jumping on every single game bandwagon just because she appeared on one stream. And now, you know, because, again, some people, so many people are like, let's immediately capitalize. Oh, my God, we did one late night stream that went well. People liked it. Let's now capitalize on this by having Cat in 17 streams, 400 co-op games. Like, no, we're not doing that. You know, this is something that's a slow easing in until it feels comfortable and, and, and fun to do and only doing things that we're interested in doing. Right now, Like a Dragon is definitely the first step towards that, okay? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, continuing on, Big Ocho gifted a membership this morning and it went to Maguro-san. <clears throat> so congratulations, Maguro-san. On the gifted membership, be sure be sure to thank Big Ocho and Big Ocho. Thank you so very much for supporting the stream this morning. I appreciate that very, very much. Okay. Just refreshing here, guys. I received a $20 tip. <clears throat> From One Minute Man, he says, You're being 40 hours in. Means nothing in Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> oh boy. Let's play your animation first. Let's get you on the leaderboard and let's see what he has to say. I, I really had no concept that One Minute Man was so heavy into Baldur's Gate 3 until we started playing it. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Understanding Baldur's Gate 3 and its myriad of minute details is like taking a college major. 100 hours in, you're going to feel the same. Tip, make sure you have a light source for the Shadowlands. Interesting. Good news is, I have a light spell that I cast on myself. So, I should be fine, right, in that regard. I should be able to just cast light and then I'll be able to see, I guess. Um, <clears throat> no, and that's very interesting. Because one of my criticisms of the game back on Wednesday when we were playing it is that why am I 40 hours in? And the game feels like it wants to be so complex that I literally have to learn something new every single time that I fight. Like, I, I even said to the audience, I said, am I ever going to feel comfortable fighting in this game? Because it seems like every time I think I am and I know what I'm doing, the game will literally throw another angle at me. So I'm supposed to just know that in the world of D&D, that undead creatures survive when you kill them and get, like, a, a saving roll and they revi auto-revive with one HP... But then after they auto-revive, they lose a turn. Like, how would I have known that? Did the game ever explain that? 
No. Am I supposed to literally every single time that I run into every single person and, and item in the universe, should I be going into the, the stats of it and studying the stats of each character for five to ten minutes before I even consider making a move? Because it's funny, already people are complaining, I take too long to fight. But then when that happens and I get taken by surprise, oh, well, you didn't look at their stats first. Yeah, because you already said I take too long to fight. <laughs> right? So that's what I mean. Like, I feel like that game, here's the thing. If you're someone who's totally into that level of time investment, tabletop RPGs, simulations, and you want to spend insane amounts of time, I get it. But I have the right. I absolutely have the right to criticize it. I'm someone who for over 15 years has played every major video game and franchise. I can put this into perspective from who could be considered more of a commoners. And it is, I feel like I'm a commoner. I'm not some expert. I'm a commoner. I'm a gaming commoner, right? So when I'm playing this game and I'm fighting and all of a sudden there's this ridiculous stuff going on that I just don't understand because it's never explained, I have right to criticize it. And listen, you don't have to think that my criticism is valid or maybe it's interesting to you to hear an outsider's perspective. Because I tell you right now, as an outsider, Baldur's Gate 3 is not accessible. It's too complex. The combat is, takes too long and it's too boring. A common person would not just jump into this game and enjoy it. So how did it win Game of the Year? Because the games media voted on it. That's why. Because the games media liked this game for many different reasons. Narrative, the choices and things you can do in it, probably romance, probably representation, probably a million things. And by the way, that's not me knocking the game. I'm telling you, from a commoner's perspective, trying to play this game, this game is too difficult and too complex and very annoying. So I can tell you probably the vast majority of people who bought this game probably will never finish it. They will play it for a few hours. Maybe maybe they'll get 10, 15 hours into Act 1, and then they'll get to a point and they'll be like, this is ridiculous. Like, I'm 15 hours into the game. I feel like I didn't do anything. Why does every fight take an hour? And every time I think I know what I'm doing, something goes wrong. You know what I mean? Even for someone like me, and here I am 40 hours in, I haven't lost a fight yet, <clears throat> right? Everyone's saying, I don't understand why Phil's criticizing the game. He literally is doing well in every fight. That's not the point. You understand? That's not the point. The point for me when I'm playing a game is that eventually I want to get to a point in said game, especially an RPG particularly. I want to feel like I can lean back and relax and say, finally, I'm at home. I know what I'm doing. I'm comfortable in my own boots. And I can play this game and know what I'm doing and have a good time. And here we go. Here's a nice session of Baldur's Gate 3. Boop. And that's never happened. Every single time I boot this game, here's a ton of things you didn't know. Here's new lore. Here's new gameplay mechanics. Here's new saving role shit. Like, what are you talking about? Will I ever just play it and get it? No. You won't. Someone even said last time, you'll literally never, ever even have a feeling of being at home until your second playthrough. Because then you've at least seen everything in the game once. So when you're playing it the second time, you can at least try to remember the first time you did it and then do it better the second time. I don't know how I feel like about that. You know, I don't. Maybe maybe for that's that's good for a lot of people and not for everyone though. So again, you might argue, well, I don't understand how did it get game of the year? Cuz journalists vote on it. I'm telling you. <laughs> and of course, well, I don't understand cuz it also won the gamer's choice. Yes, cuz of height. Yes, because of all of that not that stuff that always builds up around these games, correct? Like that's what happens with this stuff. I I have a really hard time believing that this game is purchased by a bunch of people who've never played this style of RPG before and they're playing it and beating it and loving it. That really would make, I'd be shockingly, like really, that would just blow my, my fucking socks off if, if there was some status about that. Like, I would bet if you actually were to look at stats of how many people bought Baldur's Gate 3 as a result of it winning game of the year <clears throat> and how many are actually beating it, it would be like 10%. Most people who bought this game bought it because of hype. They heard so many things about journalists loving it or the hype on the internet about it and they went and bought it and they started playing the combat. They're like, what the fuck is this? And they never played it ever again, right? Here's the thing. Elden Ring was kind of the same situation, but the difference with Elden Ring is that Elden Ring legit had mechanics to carry people, right? Like Elden Ring has the summons. So you can summon, what is it, Ash summons or whatever they're called. So you can always summon help in a fight, and th those, that could carry you the whole game. 
This game doesn't have any carrying mechanics, right? Then again, I'm playing on standard difficulty, so I don't know if I played it on easy. It has an easy difficulty setting, right? I have no clue what the difference would be with the easy setting. So maybe that's where I'm off base. Maybe if you play it on easy, it negates 90% of the complex shit and it feels more like a simple RPG and then maybe it's easier to play. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but again, I, here's the thing. and I, It's funny because when I try to be honest with people about this game, and I'm telling you, I don't dislike it. I actually am enjoying it. Why would I keep playing it like this if I didn't enjoy it? I am enjoying it. But there's levels of frustration that I'm experiencing, and I will share those with you when I feel them. Oh, well, then you see, you just don't understand it. You must hate. Why do you play a game you hate? Don't play. Like, what are you talking about? No, no, no. You have to stop fanboying for a minute. Because that's what it is. If you feel ultra defensive about Baldur's Gate 3, can I be honest with you? You didn't make the game. You don't get paid every time a copy of the game gets sold. The devs don't know who you are. They don't care. You can stop. You can remove yourself from their ball sacks now. Okay? They don't give two fucks if you kiss their game's ass or not. It doesn't matter if it's your favorite game of all time. People still have a right to criticize it. Even if you don't agree with the criticism, you should respect the criticism if people are being respectful of what you like. Stop being a fucking defense force of the game. You have to stop that mentality. Remove yourself from the testes because you're latching on to those hairs, those ball hairs, and the devs are like, oh, God the weight of the world on my sack like what is going on here just release just release yourself because no one cares that you're the biggest fanboy of this game no one you're never going to get a golden medal mailed to your house you're not going to get a trophy like this no one's going to mail the world's biggest Baldur's Gate 3 fan trophy to your house for you to, oh, look at me, Kai defended the game against everyone who said something possibly critical of the game. <laughs> no one cares about you. You can stop now. Really. People have a right to say things negative about a game, even if it won Game of the Year, even if it won Viewer's Choice Game of the Year, even if it's your personal favorite game of all time, right? No one gives a fuck. So stop being a fanboy. And that's not just of this game, it's of anything. Nintendo fanboys, Xbox, Sony ponies, shut the fuck up. No one cares about your dumb, biased opinion because you think it's the best thing ever. Here, you could sit here and go, oh, everyone, thank you. I'm the best fan ever. No one cares about you. Stop it. Allow other people to say intelligent things because what you're saying is not intelligent. If you're just blindly defending this game, and anytime someone says, well, I think there's something that possibly could be improved, but no, I am the number one fan, and you are wrong, and I'm going to shove my trophy up your ass for criticizing Baldur's Gate 3. Grow up, okay? Grow the fuck up. <laughs> and for the record, that's my Tekken 3 trophy from the 1990s, and I'll be putting that out when I play Tekken. Of course I will. Why wouldn't I? Right? Anyway. So anyway, I hope you guys understand my criticisms. It's fine if you disagree, but please respect them. And please understand there's a reason why I say that. Because I do feel like this game, sadly, has been so overhyped by the media that there's so many people who are going into it with this mentality that's like the best RPG ever, blindly just believing that. And you go to play it, and you're like, what am I playing? Why is the combat so slow? Why is there always this crazy mechanic I don't understand and I get screwed because of it? And it, it does for me. That genuinely takes away from my enjoyment of the game. When I can't understand something because it's another new mechanic that's been ex introduced and we're 40 hours in, that's not fun. That's annoying. That's like, okay, another one, another one. I've had enough. I just want to play the game now. When do I get to play? You don't get to just play the game. There's always something new to annoy you. Oh, great. I, you know, I don't want to become... Just because I'm playing Baldur's Gate 3, I don't want to have to become the ultimate scholar of D&D. &D, and it seems like that's what they're doing. Like, you have to be the ultimate scholar of D&D &D to do well in this game. Well, <laughs> sorry, that wasn't my, my intention. My life's intention here wasn't to be the number one D&D &D fan on the planet. I'm never going to play D&D &D outside of video games. I can tell you that. Like, I'm never going to do, like, a real D&D &D thing. So... I guess that's life, right? I mean, what are you going to do? Um, anyway, let's continue before I rant about this endlessly. Um, it looks like another $1.50 tip has come in. Oh, this is from the Dark Side Child Return. So they're actually here live this morning. What's your favorite persona game or protagonist? Who's your favorite Disney plus MCU show? All right, hold on. There's like a million questions. 
I'm going to try to answer these very fast because it's like 400 questions. Uh, your favorite Persona game or protagonist? Probably Persona 4. Protagonist, I don't even remember them. What's your favorite Disney MCU show? Uh, I only saw one, WandaVision. I literally never watched another show before. I used to watch that one that was on TV, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I thought that was only okay. I thought WandaVision was pretty good. What are your thoughts on Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul? They're amazing. I love both shows. Never saw the end of Better Call Saul, though. Which one do you like more? I think it's the best show. Uh, I don't know, because I didn't finish Better Call Saul, so I can't answer that. What's your favorite Batman movie? Uh, 1989 Batman, Tim Burton, with, uh, of course, Michael Keaton and uh, Jack Nicholson as the Joker. What are your thoughts on Neon Genesis Evangelion? Never saw it, so I can't really attest. I only saw it, like, late night on Adult Swim. Would you ever react to the show? Uh, probably not, because reacting to anime is a whole nightmare in itself on YouTube. Do you prefer the... Oh, do you ever watch the original Quantum Leap? Watch the entire series and loved it. Do you prefer the original? Never saw the new one, so I can't compare. What do you think compares to the original? Don't know, never saw it. What's your favorite Raimi Spider-Man movie? One. Uh, how would you rank the three movies? One, two, three. Wow. You really packed a lot of questions into a $1.50 tip. Ha, <laughs> ha, I hope you're okay with my very fast lightning round answers, because we have to end the show. And that was a crazy amount of questions. Um, it looks like some Super Chats came in too. Hold on. It looks like there was an anonymous $2 tip. So I just want to shout that out. There was a completely anonymous $2 tip. No message attached to that one. So I just want to, I want to count that one as well. So thank you for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and then uh, Purple Aki re up their membership for four months. Is loving the changes to your content. Big ups. Big ups to you, Purple Aki. Thanks for the support. Metatron, uh, also with a membership. Now, this is a new one. Uh, looks like it is. A fresh new membership saying, I wish you well in life. Thank you, Metatron. <clears throat> Actually, I take that back. That might have been a re up. Because now it is a re up. Never mind. Thank you, Metatron, for the support. Lysifer Soul with a $10 super chat. I'm your biggest fan. I'm still waiting for the official biggest Dark Side Phil fan plaque. Uh, don't worry, that's in process. That'll be out to you by next uh, millennium. Thank you, Lice for Soul, for the super chat. Okay. I think I've caught up on everything, and we do have to end the show, guys, so that we can actually get into Baldur's Gate 3 for today. Um, so thank you all. A great start. I had fun. I hope that you guys did too. And uh, now we're going to jump back into this underdog. Like I said, I think we're at the point where we were looting, and there was like... I think there was an item that people were saying I could combine to do that ice thing, but also now I have the components to go back to the forge and make that that a sword with that bark that we found, and then we could go back to the other area to the final part of the Underdark or whatever. By the way, st by the way, Stealthy Kupo, <clears throat> six month membership says, have you ever seen an actual four sided die? No. Could you make a four sided die? Is that possible? I have no idea. I'm not a dice aficionado or anything, so I don't know. I mean, you could write one, two, three, and then one on the bottom three sides so it kind of looked like a triangle would that be like a triangle with a square bottom how would that work though because would it roll properly it wouldn't be even when you roll it right i don't think it would ever be even when you roll it wouldn't you have an, a, a strong increased chance of it always like landing flat and not working a triangle with a triangle bottom Oh yeah, you're right. All four it would be four triangles, three triangles and a triangle on the bottom. I never seen it, but it makes sense. <clears throat> okay, cool. No, I'm not a dice guy. You know, I never, I've literally never. The the only things I ever used dice for were board games back in the day. You know, any any game where you roll the dice to to play Monopoly. Um, uh, what was the one? What was the game that I played with my parents all the time? Clue, Clue. You always use dice. Yep. Those, you know, I, I was like two, three games. I always used dice to play, but that was about it. I was not a big dice guy. I never saw any of these complex RPG dice or anything. Um, you know, the ones we're seeing in this game are some of the most complex I've ever seen. A 20-sided die is pretty insane, right? <clears throat> All right. Shall we adjourn? I think we should adjourn. I want to say thank you, guys. Great podcast. Long one. A lot to talk about. Tomorrow, guys, remind me. Let's do the Phil's Day Off segment tomorrow. Because I actually have some interesting stuff to talk about from my day off with Kat uh, regarding not only our Wednesday night stream, but some other cool stuff that happened. Some games and stuff that we played. Yeah, but we didn't get to it today. Okay? All right, everyone. 
thank you. Great podcast today. Great way to jump right back into the new streaming week. I want to say thank you all. This has been a great, uh, a great experience this week overall. You know, the throwback stuff seems to be doing well so far. It's a good start. I should say that because, you know, it's always interesting starting up something new and not knowing how it's going to go. But uh, so far, I feel like it's going well. Um, you know, having my wife on stream was a, was a really fun experience. I'm happy and looking forward to more of that. Um, everything is going pretty smoothly right now, you know, on the channel here. <clears throat> and uh, I'm looking forward to so much stuff with you all. So thank you guys. And uh, let us now end the show. Tomorrow, like I said, let's not only recap what we do today, but let's also do a Phil's Day Off segment because I have a lot to say about that that I think you guys will enjoy. And uh, let's not forget about it, all right? Thank you, guys. I will see you tomorrow. Peace out.